Se ser na nossa seguida, você tem uma coluna, olha lá. And the news this week starts with pigs. Gene edited pigs, which are immune to a fatal respiratory disease called PRRS, which is one of the most expensive livestock diseases for farmers every year. Gene editing is relatively new, but also a very controversial technology that allows humans to genetically modify animals, and many critics are saying this new pig will discourage farmers to giving their animals better welfare. And scientists have analysed mitochondrial DNA of a 22,000 year old panda and found that there are a separate lineage of giant panda that separated from modern day pandas around 144,000 to 227,000 years ago. Because of this new discovery, scientists are saying that more needs to be done to find out how panda genetic diversity has changed through time and how that relates to modern day pandas. Previously, we have never really been able to detect molecules on distant exoplanets, but now there is an idea where a telescopic device will only be sensitive to certain molecules, effectively rendering the star invisible, unless of course the planet is made of the same materials. This could help scientists find out what the atmospheres of these distant planets are made of. And this week in paleontology news, four frog fossils have been described that were preserved in amber from Myanmar. This type of preservation provides lots of information on the ancient environment at this time and place, and what researchers have found is that this is the first evidence of frogs being present in a wet tropical forest. Wet tropical forests are very important habitats for frogs in present day, and so it's interesting to find evidence of the animals inhabiting similar areas back in the Cretaceous. There has been some new research this week looking at the evolutionary history of crocodilian mouths. A small rostrum from a kind of prehistoric crocodilian known as Shartagasuchid was uncovered in the Jurassic rocks of the Gobi Desert several years ago and has now been analysed, revealing that it possessed a closed secondary palate, an adaptation that modern crocodiles have which helps them bite with high forces. This discovery means that Shartagasuchids evolved such a feature earlier than expected and that it was a convergently evolved adaptation. Two new species of Ediacarian organisms from South Australia were described this week, with both being named after celebrities. One has been called Obamas in honour of Barack Obama and his passion for science, and the other is named Atenborites after the legendary natural history presenter, adding yet another entry to the list of organisms named after the man. These two genera also represent new body plans that haven't been encountered before in this time period. Some more research related to crocodile mouths this week, as it turns out that dinosaurs couldn't stick out their tongues, instead they were probably attached to the lower mouth in an immobile fashion similar to the condition seen in crocodiles. Paleontologists examined the tongue supporting bones in prehistoric dinosaurs and in modern birds and crocodilians, and found that the bones were most similar in structure to those in crocodiles. This means that most non-avian dinosaurs likely had very inflexible tongues, but birds then later evolved more flexible ones, possibly as a result of the evolution of flight. Thank you for watching this week's 7 Days of Science. Double upload today, and sorry for not uploading on Sunday as we are working on our new series, Things We Don't Know. We'll see you then for episode 2.